Hey everybody, my name is Carrie Bernstein and I'm the Executive Director at Stand for Animals Veterinary Clinic and I'm here today to give you your go home instructions after your pet's spay neuter surgery. Normally we would be doing this in person in our lobby but given everything that's going on in the world we wanted to make this video so you'd have something to watch at home in addition to reading your discharge instructions. So when you get home, if you open your discharge packet, there will be a sheet of paper in the packet that is a set of written discharge instructions. And ideally, you would go home and read that entire sheet of paper. I'm just giving you a little bit of information just as an overview to get you started. So if you're picking up a dog from surgery today, when you get your dog home, we would recommend that the first thing you do is give them a little bit of water. What we hear from our clients is a lot of times since they didn't eat last night and we didn't feed them today while they were in the clinic, that you want to give them something to eat. And we would recommend that you wait at least an hour after you get home to feed them to give them time to kind of settle down from their day. And when you feed them, we want you to feed them their normal diet. We don't want you to change their diet tonight because if you go and decide that because you want to make them feel better, you're going to serve them a sirloin steak and they've never had a sirloin steak, it's highly likely that it might make them not feel well and then we're not going to know if they're having an issue related to surgery or it's because you decided to feed them something different. So make sure you feed them their normal diet and we suggest that you start off by feeding them about a third of what you normally would feed them. If they eat that and they seem hungry, it's always fine to give them more, but it's better for you and for them just to go slow and be as moderate as you can possibly be. And during their surgical procedure, we put a liquid Novocaine on all of their incisions and we also gave them a long acting pain injection. So tonight, it's not required that you give them any pain medicine. In your go-home packet, you're going to find a vial of medication. It's got the directions and the dosage on there. It's cut up in the right size. And what we recommend is that you start this the day after surgery. And we recommend you give it after breakfast and after dinner because that way you make sure that they've got the right amount of time in between the two meds. And dogs and cats are like people, they tend to tolerate their pain medicine better if they have something in their belly. And then we recommend that you give them the medication until it's all gone. And then your job for the next 14 days, because that's how long it takes the incisions to actually knit back together, is to look at their incision every day. And the reason that we tell you that is because if you're checking the incision daily, you will make sure that everything's healing normally. And when we say normally, it means that when you look at the incision, it's not open or oozing, there's no goo coming out of it, it's not red, it's not swollen, it should heal just like an incision on you heals. So every day you look at it, you should see improvement. And if you look at it and you think to yourself, I'm not sure that that looks right, it's better for you to reach out to us and let us know and let us decide if it's okay then just ignore it because if you ignore it what ends up happening is you end up with an infection a dog with a fever you have to come back we have to give antibiotics it's a whole thing so just make sure that you're checking it every day and when you look at their incisions you'll notice everybody has a little green mark on their belly and that's where we tattoo them and while people don't believe it when we tell them we open up at least 10 dogs a week that don't have the uh, parts that we're looking for. So that little tattoo ensures that in the off chance somebody picks up your dog and decides to take them in and get them fixed, they'll shave their belly, see that little green mark, and they won't re-anesthetize them. Um, and as we said, we, don't, um, we want you to check the incision every day, and we don't want those incisions to get wet for the next 14 days. So that means no bathing, no grooming, no swimming. The incisions need to stay as dry as possible. So if you take your dog out for a walk in the morning and we want you to leash walk them for at least the first seven days and their bellies get wet for some reason, just pat their belly dry. And if your dog ends up in a mud puddle and they're so dirty that you just can't take it anymore, you can always take some baby wipes and just wipe off their paws and their belly. Just we don't want those incisions um, getting wet. 
And if you have any medical concerns that are not uh, related to an emergency, all the emergency information is on that discharge seat, sheet that I mentioned earlier. If you have a non-emergency medical issue and you need to uh, reach a doctor, the fastest way to reach a doctor in our practice is to email. And on the front of your packet, it's on the top right corner, I believe, it's, it, it gives the email address and it's surgery at stand for animals spelled out that's us dot org so if we have an on-call doctor every day from seven in the morning till ten at night even on the weekends so as i said if you have a question about something the fastest way to reach a doctor is to email that email address if you got a cone from us i'm sure you know by now that we did not put them on your dog as you left the building and the reason that we don't put them on is because if you make them wear their cone in their car there is a high probability that they will get car sick. So unless they were already licking their incision in the building, we leave this to you to do when you get home tonight. And what we say about the dogs are, if you're gonna be with your dog and keep your eye on what's going on, your dog doesn't need to wear the cone. But if you're gonna leave your dog unattended for more than 10 minutes, the cone has to go on. And the boys need to wear it for about five to seven days and the girls need to wear it for about seven to 10. But if you brought a younger dog to be fixed, they're like children, they heal much more quickly. So if you keep your eye on the incision, once the incision looks all nice and healed up, no more cone. If you got a cone, it's gonna look like this and have some loops at the top, and you have to put a collar through those loops in order to keep the cone securely fastened around your dog's neck. And if you don't have a collar, you can certainly use a piece of gauze uh, if that's what you have at your house, or we're happy to provide that as well. And you just run the collar through the loops. Okay, so you got the collar through the loops, and the hardest part of the process is actually this part, which is pushing the cone on over the dog's head. So you push it on over the dog's head. If this would fit, I would do it to myself. And then you close the collar, and you should be able to get two fingers between the cone and your dog's neck. That means it's the right security. And your dog can do everything in the cone that they can do without the cone, even though they may act like the world has come to an end as they know it. But what we tell you is, if they're having trouble eating, you can either take it off or you can lift their bowl up so it makes it easier for them to eat. Um, but they can go outside, they can do everything that they normally would do with the cone on. If you have any questions or you need to reach us for something other than a medical issue, you're welcome to email us at info, I-N-F-O, at standforanimals.org. And we hope we found, you found this helpful, and we're hoping that everyone has um, an easy recovery and quick incision healing.